Everyone, welcome back to the workshop. We've been working through a number of lasers this year and I've had a number of projects recently that you may have seen where we've been testing out the Wayne Lux L6 laser. And so I thought it was about time to give it a proper review video. So that's what we're gonna do. So if that's interests you, stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into it. All right, let's jump into some of the details of the Wayne Lux L6 laser. This is a diode laser that's rated at a 10 watt optical output has a working area of 350 by 335 millimeters or roughly 13.7 by 12.6 inches for its working area. The spot focus of the laser is 0 0.08 by 0 0.05 millimeters. Its max engraving speed is 9,000 millimeters a minute or roughly 150 millimeters per second. The frame itself is made from, it's the front and back are made from plastic molded pieces while the important rails on both the side and the gantry are of a metal uh, extruded aluminum style. The module itself has the acrylic plastic shield and then inside there is an included air assist nozzle which then is piped in through the hose in the back. Along with that acrylic lens shield it does have a flip down lever that allows you for your focus which is about five millimeters below the acrylic shield. This laser, like many we've looked at, is compatible with laser GRBL as well as Lightburn. We're going to be doing all of our testing in Lightburn. As typical of diode laser, this one can cut some hardwoods, softwoods, MDF, some acrylics, cardboard, leather, cardstock, things like that. As far as metals, you cannot cut into them, but you can etch stainless steel. It'll mark that, and you can also remove the anodization or powder coating off of other metals such as aluminum. All right, now I'm not going to go over a full build of this laser. They do have a pretty decent manual that shows you how to assemble it, and there are not too many steps to this one. Everything went together fairly smoothly. They do have some cable management up on top that gets bolted down with some clasps, and then everything else is assembled with button head metric screws. They do include some belt adjustment that you loosen the side nut, and then you insert the Allen key into the front, and then you tighten or loosen that to adjust the belts. However, I find it a little tough to get at the belts to see exactly how tight or loose they are. Um, while it does provide some protection from dust, it does make it a little bit difficult to do that maintenance on there as well. They also include rubber slip pads on the bottom of the laser feet. Uh, these do help keep it from sliding around. Nice feature that is included on the laser is it does have limit switches. They are both located over on the left side of the laser. Um, as the front one moves forward, it hits the post, and as the laser head moves over, that one will hit the one on the side. I do have an issue with the way I set this up with the air coming down on this side. The air hose does tend to hit that limit switch. Um, the only other way to run this air hose would be to run it around the back of the gantry, but then I feel it's going to be tricky to keep it from sliding around and snagging. So perhaps if they moved it on the other side, it would have worked better. But um, you know, just keep that in mind as you're routing your cables uh, and maybe try to get that out of the way. One thing that is good and bad on this laser is that your power button, your USB computer cable, your power lead, your access for your compact flash card, um, and then they do have ports for a roller accessory and an LCD screen. Those are all on the back. While that is great, it keeps them out of the way. It also means it's hard to get at them. So if you wanted to turn your laser on or off with the button, you have to reach behind the back to get at it. So if this is in an enclosure, or if it's at the back of your table, it's gonna be hard to get at those buttons. This kit did come with an included air pump, which is great considering it has air assist nozzle included. Um, this does have its separate power brick. Uh, not a big fan of these larger bricks that plug into your power strips this way. They can block ports. So I'd love to see a smaller plug on there but uh, it does uh, have decent cable length and then just plugs in here. And then you have a variable speed knob on there. I believe this puts out up to about 30 liters of air per minute, which is decent for a 10 watt laser. Um, so it was actually very effective in our tests and I was not sure how a smaller pump like this was gonna work at first, but in our tests, as you'll see, uh, actually worked out pretty well. All right, so moving on to the operation of the laser. Um, as with everything we do, we always start with material tests. And my typical material for these 10 watt lasers is to test it with eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. And as you can see here, we did run that test and I was pleasantly surprised at how well this operated in the upper range. So at 100% power and 325 millimeters a minute, we were still cutting through cleanly 
all the way down to 150 millimeters a minute and 40% power. So quite the range to work with on there and I'm quite happy with these results. We then ran our engraving test on the same material and here you see it up to 8,000 millimeters a minute and we were getting a pretty consistent range up in those upper levels. So I'm not sure how much more faster this was actually running at those higher speeds, but uh, we found that in the four to 5,000 range, we were getting pretty consistent results on this material and we were pretty happy with that. So that's where we started for the rest of our tests. So after figuring out our cut settings for one eighth inch material, I then took that and created some custom ornaments, both in a single layered style and then also this double layered style with both plywood and cedar wood. So one of the fun things you can do with these lasers is customized gifts. As you saw in a previous video, I was able to cut out some EVA foam, both in quarter inch and 16th inch for a variety of projects. And then we also moved up to quarter inch material. This is some cedar making a smartphone or tablet stand and it performed quite well being able to cut this out cleanly and able to move the parts in and set them up out of some 16th inch chipboard, we were able to make some gift tags or price tags. This material worked very well as well, up around the 400 millimeters a minute for cutting, and then 4,000 millimeters a second for engraving, and produced some nice results if you're wanting to make some price tags and or some gift tags. Again, I'll have those videos linked down below if you wanna check out more on those projects. And one of the areas where these diodes shine is of course in engraving. And so we did some engraving tests, so I did this little Minnesota Twins coin with some multi-colored layers there. You can see that the inner circle is a little bit different from the outer one. And then we did some photo engraving. This is a split rock, right, split rock lighthouse up on Lake Superior North Shore. It's just a cell phone picture that I captured this fall while I was up there camping with my family. And uh, with a little more time and a little better medium, Baltic Birch shows a lot of the grain. Uh, and a little more, a little higher resolution photo. This would come out even better than that, but to show you that this machine can do engraving very well. We also worked in other mediums and we were able to create these leather patches out of this leatherette material. Worked very well. As a matter of fact, it was performing just as well as a 40 watt CO2 laser at uh, an even better quality due to their finer point of engraving. All right, so as I said, this is gonna be a quick review uh, if you want to see more in depth what I was working with this, I'll have the links to the other project videos down below. But let's just talk about my final thoughts about this laser. As far as the 10 watt diode laser, I felt it performed really well in line with other 10 watt diode lasers that we've been looking at in this shop. Uh, one of the things I really appreciate about it is it does have a fairly fast white space movement. So if you're doing a lot of um, multi uh, item cuts or a lot of engravings, it does seem to move around fairly quickly and that can help improve the quality and the speed of your engraving. The included air pump is great to see. I wouldn't recommend getting a laser in 10 watt without an air assist in it. So having this included, both the nozzle and the pump is great. The fact that it has a variable speed on the pump is wonderful as well. And I thought the pump actually performed better than uh, some of the others I've looked at. So a couple of the concerns I have is that cleaning the rails and adjusting the wheels is gonna be a little more difficult on the sides as they are kind of buried in there. Um, but it is something that you do need to do. So just keep in mind that it's gonna be a little trickier to get at those in here. Uh, you are going to want to make sure you run this thing with an enclosure. And so I wouldn't leave this out on the open unless you are literally outside or in an open frame uh, with a lot of air moving through it building. And then a honeycomb is also gonna be essential to operating this, and so I will have links below to both of those. As far as the price of this laser, it's right in the mid-range. At the time of this video, it was running at about 598, but there were some coupons to bring that down by up to another $100. So about a $500 price point for this right now actually puts it right in line with, I think, its performance. So um, a lot of pros and cons there as far as what it might be able to do for you compared to others. And if you have any other questions about this, laser specifically, please leave a comment down below or reach out to me through my contact us links. That is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope if you were looking at this laser, this was a bit informative. Like I said, the details to those other projects are gonna be down below, check out those links. I will have links to this laser down below as well. Some of them will be affiliate links. Those do go help to this channel. Uh, no pressure to use them, but if you did find it informative and you're looking to purchase this, I appreciate you using those. I'll also have links to uh, other things that I find useful as well. Uh, from laser safety glasses to materials. So check those out if you are into 
getting one of these and need some material to get started. If you do have questions, like I said, leave them down below. I do try to get back to those in a timely manner. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm checking out next or projects we're doing in the future, hit that subscribe button so you can be sure to find out what's going on in my workshop. So I hope you have a great day and I hope you get out into your workshop and are able to make something too. We'll catch you next time.